Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Ventrac Live. My name is Aaron Graber. I'll be your host tonight. And we are here on a most exciting evening with one of our biggest product launches ever. So we're not going to waste too much time. We're going to get right into it after I do a few agenda items. First and foremost, though, I want to thank everybody for being out there on the live chat and following along. Uh, we've, we've noticed all the comments. We've been reading them, getting us amped up, ready to go. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, also, we'd like to, to welcome, uh, we've got a few of our YouTube personalities in the comment section. We've got Pete from GCI Turf. We've got Tim Marks and Christy Marks from Ta Tractor Time with Tim. We've got Cameron from Lawn Care Life in Missouri. And we've, al we've also got Josh uh, from Stony Ridge Farmers. So make sure you interact with those guys, ask them some questions. Some of them also have some inside information on this new product. So as we go through the pre presentation, uh, they might be a good resource to Okay, hopefully we are back. We had a little bit of a glitch. Uh, not quite sure why, but this is truly live. We've got technical things going on. Uh, so hopefully we're all good. It, it seems like we are. Um, we'll be letting you know in the chat if something else happens again. So sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so back to the agenda. So um, thanks for those guys being here, all of our YouTube personalities. Make sure you interact with those guys. Um, what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is go to a reveal video. It's a pre-recorded video that we put some marketing efforts into. Uh, kind of a hype, general sort of product reveal. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go straight into the details on this thing. So I'm going to walk around. I'm going to give you all the, all the specs and talk about it. Uh, should be pretty fun. Intermixed with that, we'll do some trivia questions. And those trivia questions will yield five lucky winners, uh, a few different packages. So we're going to give away some uh, gear from our YouTube personality stores. It, also, we're going to give some stuff from the Ventrac store as well. So we've got some new merchandise that we'll go through at the end. Uh, th those will be part of the winnings as well. Uh, and so those will be questions that will be inter interspersed with the rest of the presentation. Um, at the end, we'll wrap up with some availability questions, and we'll uh, talk about where you can see this thing in person, uh, and we'll get right into it after that. The first thing that we want to do before we get to the reveal video, though, is we have our first trivia question. Uh, so the first person to answer this correctly will win one of the packages that I just mentioned. And that question is, name one accessory that we launched on our live launch two weeks ago. Go. All right, so in the chat, we'll be following along. Um, let's do the reveal video, and then we'll get right into it.
you have it, the all-new Ventrac 4520 tractor. Whew, feels good to say. We've been sitting on that for a little bit now. Uh, got through the technical difficulties. What a reveal. Hopefully you guys are as excited as we are. Uh, this is an all-new machine for us, and we could not be happier to be sharing with all of you. I've been using it for a little while now, obviously, uh, and I cannot wait to tell you all the details about it. So let's get into it. Uh, first and foremost, so yes, this is a brand new machine for us. Um, and we want to answer all of your questions. Uh, as, they, as they keep coming in through the chat, we'll hit the ones that uh, are easy to answer from the background team here. Um, if there's anything that's a little bit more technical, they'll try and feed that to me later. Uh, and then questions that are a little bit uh, more detailed or need to go deeper into personal situations on ordering and stuff like that, just leave those in the chat if you have them. We'll circle back with you later, and we'll do a later Q&A video or something to follow up on all of the questions that might be out there so that everybody gets all the information they need. So let's get into it. All right, this tractor is a brand new machine, but it is built on the same legendary platform as the 4500 and some of the previous models preceding that machine as well. So if you're new to Ventrac, uh, then what that means is that this machine is somewhat similar to the previous model with a lot of different changes under the hood. If you're familiar with Ventrac, what it means is it will feel very similar. It's what you know and love, only it's a lot of refinement and a lot of new features as well. Uh, we've got a graphic on screen right now that will show some of the bullet points as to uh, old versus new, and so what you can expect going from the 4500 to the 4520. And some of those things that are really important to touch on right away uh, would be attachment compatibility is probably the first one. So this new machine uh, carries forward with the same attachments as before. It is compatible with all the prior attachments on the 4500 and before, and all the future attachments that we have planned for now on the 4520 will also be operable on the 4500. They have the same auxiliary circuits, same plugins, same hitch arms. Uh, everything should be functional the same way. Uh, the next thing would be operator experience and controls. If you have operated a 4500 or a 4200 previous to that, this will feel very similar. The learning curve is very short. If you've not operated the machine at all, you'll be able to hop on this machine and learn it also in a quick, quick amount of time. But if you are familiar, uh, the drive levers are in the same place, steering wheel feels the same, operator position is very much the same, so it's going to feel right at home to you. Uh, next, the frame geometry and function. The flex frame, the dimensions, the overall weight and chassis is almost identical. There are a lot of changes underneath uh, and structural changes uh, that, we, that we made to uh, accommodate certain uh, component changes. But overall, outside dimensions and footprint of the machine, almost identical to before. So again, exactly what you can expect for trailering, for operation on whatever sites you're working on, all that good stuff. And lastly, cab and accessories. So this is an important one. The cab from the prior 4500 will go on to the 4520. So if you have a fleet of these things, uh, or if, you're, if you've got something that you're waiting to put a cab on, um, that cab is compatible. It does require a few new brackets to go on the 4520, and those will be included with all new cabs. So the new cab will go backwards compatible to the 4500, and a 4500 cab can go on a 4520 with a few modifications that will be available. That leads us to our second uh, question for trivia, and that is, what year was the 4000 series tractor introduced? So the very first version of what has ultimately become the 4520. What year was that introduced? We'll be checking in the comments for the winner of that one. OK, so let's get into the next thing. And this is really the big part of the revision of this machine, the change of this machine, uh, that makes it totally different from before. And that is, it's a, it's a total hydraulic update. Um, what we're saying is nearly 100% of the hydraulic system has changed in some way from the 4500 to the 4520, and that's going to represent a, a bunch of different changes that you'll feel as an operator. Uh, the two things that we focused on in this area were improving performance and durability. Obviously, if you're a commercial operator and you've got a lot of hours on these machines, you know that they are very durable. They go many thousands of hours in most cases, um, and when taken care of, they can last maybe a lifetime depending on the operator. Uh, but there's always room for improvement, and we've done a few things to make them even better, especially in those really demanding commercial applications. Um, the first thing, and the top priority, though, is performance of this machine. And we've executed that in a few different ways. We'll talk about that over the next couple slides. Uh, but the performance of the machine, from a hydraulic standpoint, is vastly improved. And I can tell you from personal experience, this machine, actually, this tractor, this very specific one, uh, was the one that was in a lot of those hype videos and some of the pre-launch teasers that we did. I've been putting dozens of hours of it on this thing over the last couple years, uh, and I can tell you from my experience, it is phenomenal uh, compared to any other machine that I've driven. So it's awesome. 
Uh, this one's brand new. We're going to use this one as a test, uh, test bed for showing some of the new features today because it's nice and clean and pretty, and uh, we'll get into that here in a second. The first thing that we changed in the hydraulic system is the pumps and motors. So we went from a 15cc system to a 20cc system. So that re represents a 33% increase uh, in displacement, and what that means is much higher torque, and that translates to better operating speed, better operating performance in those demanding applications. Uh, we've also added an additional relief valve at 5,000 PSI, which should help durability of the machine, uh, and it kind of helps guard, especially if you've got a fleet of these things and, and if you've got operators who aren't as in tune with the machine and they're really pushing it to its limits, helps guard against system failures, uh, make sure that it's as durable as possible, even when the machine is being pushed to its limits. On the priority and relief valves, again, um, the relief valve has a higher threshold uh, before engagement, which allows a higher auxiliary flow at pressure. And you'll notice that at the auxiliary, uh, running different attachments in various applications, uh, the speed of those attachments is faster. Uh, it's more consistent, more controllable. We'll get into that too. We'll get a little bit more detailed here on the next question. Um, so we have our trivia question number three now too, um, and that is the flex frame. So we're talking about the chassis, the hydraulics, uh, staring at the machine, the flex frame itself. This is my favorite question, by the way. <laughs> the first person to correctly spell oscillation. As we know, flex frame articulates and oscillates. The first person to correctly spell oscillation wins trivia number three. Okay. Continuing on hydraulics. Um, we've also got all new hoses and fittings in the system. We've gone to O-ring face fittings. Uh, again, better sealing, more reliability, uh, just better all around for durability of machine over time. Uh, and we've also got larger return lines to reduce the heat generation. There's a few different tricks on this machine to help improve the heat management. Um, obviously, we're packing a lot of power into a small compact package, so we've got to get that heat out of there, and this machine is more efficient than ever at doing that. Uh, speaking on that, we have updated the hydraulic cooler as well. That's back here in the same place that it was before. Um, that is uh, a little bit different in, in a way that allows it to be more efficient for, for heat management. There's also a quick access door uh, to be able to get to that and clean it out in a, in a much more efficient way. So Mark, if you want to come over here, we'll look at that on this spot here. Um, what we've got is these two bolts now. You take these off, uh, and that'll give you quicker access to cleaning out in front of that hydraulic oil cooler so that you can do that regular maintenance. Back on the auxiliary circuit, uh, we want to emphasize that it is now faster and stronger than the 4500. What does that mean? It means that all of the attachments that are in the lineup will be run a little bit easier if they're a demanding attachment. Um, so think about a power bucket as a great example, going into uh, a, a pile of dirt, scooping up and lifting. It's going to lift with more force. It's going to lift faster. And it's going to be easier to get stuff done in a more efficient way. Uh, we have better steering forces because of the auxiliary circuit as well. You'll also notice that sitting on the machine, because of, of the updates to the, to the steering system and the auxiliary system, there is no noise now, or very minimal noise, when you turn the wheel. That was kind of a signature thing of a Ventrac. You heard that whine. Uh, there was never anything wrong with that. It was just the way the system worked. That is gone now. It's much quieter, and it's a little less fatiguing to operate. I think it's, very, it's really smooth. It just kind of feels a lot more refined as well. Uh, we've got improved internal leakage characteristics uh, for a minimum of a double holding capacity time, and we have stronger detents here in the lever. So that's another thing we can show you over here. Um, Making sure this machine is in float is very critical for a lot of the attachments that we run. So if it pops out of float, then the attachment is maybe not working properly if it's a ground engaging attachment, especially like a mower deck. So if you've got an operator who tends to pull on this lever or something, these detents being stronger uh, will help guard against that. So that's a change as well. The dual auxiliary kit is also a little bit different. You'll see it here on the side of this machine. This is the updated version. Uh, so we've basically just gone to a different orientation of these valves. They are, in, a set, in essence, the same valves as before. They're just laid out a little differently. These outer two are the primary two valves, uh, and the inner two are the extras for attachments that require two extra valves. Um, over here on this side is the standard configuration still, and you can see with the 12 volt, that doesn't change. Um, the difference here is that the installation time and the simplicity of the system is improved, so that just helps, uh, again, quality, durability, reliability, better in, the, in this way as well. All right, now let's go to structural improvements. So another thing that we've done with this new machine is we've updated the center pivot area. Mark, you're going to have to get down here for this one. 
So we've gone to a new center main pivot. You can see it right in here. And a new, no, new lower link right down here. And these have moved to precision ball joints. And what that does is that it improves, again, reliability and durability uh, from what we had before. Obviously, these areas are not perfect, and a lot of force goes through them. Those are some, some places where if a machine has really worked hard, uh, you can notice some, some wear and tear. So those should help service life of those components and help the machine feel tighter and fresher a lot longer into its service life. We've also added a front grille access plate to the front of the machine here. And you'll see that here with these four bolts. These come off very quickly uh, with captured clips behind. And that gives you access to the belt behind here. And if you should need to change that, it makes it a much simpler, easier job to do. Uh, before, you kind of had to remove the front grille and, and work yourself up in there and it just took a little bit too long. So that's nice, uh, makes it a little bit easier to work on. And another example here that you'll see is these bolts. We've gone to smooth head flange bolts in a lot of service areas. And that is just to make it easier to live with this machine. So we got a lot of, of customer feedback over the years of um, button head bolts in certain places being not preferable to work on because they're just a little bit harder to work with. So you'll see in some areas, especially like back here, some of these access panels, they've gone to these um, updated smooth head flange bolts so that they're easier to work on and you can get a little better purchase on the bolts long term. And that leads us to trivia question number four. All right, so that one, we're going to go down here to the bottom. Sneak back here. Mark, you can poke in a little bit. Right here, there's a switch. Just underneath the seat on the left side, it's the yellow toggle, just like that. What is that switch for? That is a carryover switch from the 4500. It is a current item. It will remain on the 4520, but we want to know what's its purpose. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is the obvious, the aesthetics of this machine. So we didn't want to waste all of our energy making it perform better and drive better and, and do everything else better without making it look better. Um, looks are obviously subjective, but I think it's awesome. Obviously, we've changed a lot of things here. I think it just modernizes it. Our goals here were to do two things. We listen to customers as much as we possibly can, and you know, two things came, came, came through loud and clear. Please make it less ugly. <laughs> and don't change it because it looks classic and it looks awesome and it's, it's hardcore, metal, American-made steel. So how do we do both of those things at once? Uh, I think we did a pretty good job. I think we accomplished it. Uh, we're still the same heavy metal frame, heavy, heavy metal hood and fenders and everything, but we tweaked it a little bit, brought it up a little bit to a more modern stance. You'll see some different hood lines here. We've got different graphics, different cutouts on the side panels. In the front, we go to a new four headlight design. I'll talk about those here in a little bit and, and say some specs on those, but these are standard LED lights across the board. These will come on every model now. Um, we've also gone to a couple different accent colors. So we've got a black ROPS on the machine. This is a standard ROPS. We've got black wheels, and we've got some updated graphics in the back. Uh, the black wheels will also carry forward on the dual kits. And if you noticed, uh, if you had a keen eye on some of the previous product launches, I can think back to the HQ Tough Cut deck that we updated. There were black wheels on the front of that. Uh, and that wasn't just because of product availability. That was because we're kind of queuing things up. Uh, a lot of the attachments will be going that way as well. So we get matching uh, components on front and rear and uh, bringing the look all together with those black wheels across the board. That's going to happen over time with most of the attachments. And it's going to make the machine just you know, have a lot of extra continuity from the front to the rear. Um, there are a couple other places that we've updated some sheet metal that you'll see as you poke around the machine in person. Um, and we'll talk about them as we get to some other, other uh, areas of the machine as well. You'll see some sheet metal here next to the PTO switch that we've updated some things there. Uh, and then there are some other structural things on the inside that uh, we won't get into, but just to improve, again, durability and serviceability. OK. Now we'll go to the rest of the miscellaneous items that we haven't talked about so far. And the first thing is a feature that we've lost. So uh, over here on this side, you'll see we no longer have a toolbox, and that's for a couple reasons. Uh, one, again, that access panel, the quick access panel to the cooling system that we talked about, uh, that kind of took up a lot of space. And then we've moved our PTO and a lot of the controls to this front area. Reason for that is closer proximity to the drive levers and uh, just a little bit easier panel to work with. We put all the lights from the dash over here as well. 
So that's resulted in the loss of the toolbox. But what we've done is improve your options there in a couple different ways. We'll start with the small one. So these are not available yet, but they will be. We are waiting on a couple things, and I'll go into that here in a second. Uh, but these toolboxes are designed to go in a couple different spots. So this is a, a ROPS bolt-on toolbox that will sit here. Uh, this doesn't have the actual toolbox in it. This will be an ammo can style box that will sit in here in this, in this cradle, and you'll have a strap that goes over it. Also on the inside of this is a slot for your cell phone. There's a soft area down here so that you don't bang it up too bad, and your cell phone can slide in there and sit. The reason that is there is because we now also have a USB charging port on the inside right down here, you can see. So you have easy access to that charging port for your phone or other device. The other toolbox option that we have, I do have a box example for, and this will mount to the back of the ROPS. So it mounts back here behind the operator and very similar. It's a structure that a box will sit in and then a strap will go around. It's a standard ammo can size, and the reason these will not be available right away is because the entire world is having a hard time getting a hold of plastic right now, and we are no exception. So our suppliers are having a, a, a difficult time pinning down an exact delivery date on the, the plastic that we want to make these boxes out of. They'll have a Ventrac logo on them. They'll be properly UV protected so that they don't crack and fail over time, uh, and that's going to take a little bit extra time. So stay tuned for those. Those will be available eventually, but they are not available at launch for this yet. We just wanted to kind of give you a, a heads up that they're coming. Um, okay, so another thing that we've done on the tractor side is we've added tie-down points to the front hitch, and you'll see these down here at the bottom. Again, listening to customers, please give us as many tie-down points as possible. There was always a tie-down point and still is on the front, this bar way underneath the transaxle here, but it's kind of hard to get to. So we've got new um, hitch areas, hook, hook areas under the hitch here in the front. Back to the back. Mark, we're going back and forth all the time. <laughs> we've got a new seat. This is the new standard seat. So this is going to come on every machine. This is the base seat. Uh, it's somewhat similar to the previous one. We didn't get a lot of negative feedback on that. In fact, a lot of people really love the seat, so we didn't want to change it too much. Uh, but we did add a little bit more bolstering here. It's a little more supportive. I really like this seat, especially if, you spend, if you're spending a long day in the machine and you're sitting on it for a long time. But again, this is the new standard seat, a couple different features. Uh, it's got a different rail slide system with the hook latches. And also, we will have a suspension seat available that has uh, heat included in the, in the suspension seat. So that's a new option for us as well. Um, that seat will not work on the 4500. So the heated seat option, suspension seat option, is only for the 4520. But that is available and will be available for these machines as well. So back to the LED headlights. Like I said, these are new as well. If you've been paying attention, you've seen these exact headlights on some of our previous product launches. Uh, I can think of the blower kits being one of them uh, in the cab as well. These headlights are 1,000 lumens a piece, so we've got four standard on each machine now. And you also see them back here in the work light kit. These headlights are super bright. They look really good. We're actually going to show you them right now on this tractor right here. So Jacob, if you want to hit the lights for me. You can see me. There you go. Hopefully that looks pretty good. We have no idea how this is going to look in video because these things are probably pretty bright. But all right, why don't you hit the lights again, Jacob? So basically, they just have a lot more power. There's a lot more uh, spread. Um, if you're running even our widest attachment, like the wide area mower, this outer light does throw the light back past the corner of the deck now so that there's much greater visibility out the sides as well. Just a nice functional addition to the machines. OK, uh, let's go to next the gauge cluster. So I'll turn this key on. You can see we have an updated gauge cluster on this tractor. And it's a lot of the same controls, a lot of the same notifications. But again, improving durability and reliability, working on this gauge to get it into a, uh, a better position than the previous one. Um, and we've changed a few things. Obviously, it has a different look, different kind of chamfer to the side. And you'll notice the dash is super clean here now because there's none of those uh, switches that were here. They've moved over to the side. All right, next is the foot pedal. So Mark, if you want to come down here, I'll stand on this side still. We have updated the foot pedal to be a little more functional for those that do prefer to use the foot pedal or would like to use it supplemental. It still works in the same way. So as you move the lever, the foot pedal moves. 
and vice versa if you move the foot pedal, the lever moves. Uh, but we've just changed the profile and the shape of it. I'm going to sit on and demonstrate that it's a little bit different. Your leverage is a lot better the way that it is now. It angles up at the front and back. It feels a little more natural. And probably more importantly, we've added, this one's not bolted on, so keep in mind it will actually be bolted fast. But if you take this bolt out, you can remove this center plate. And now you've got not really a treadle pedal, but you've got a place to put your foot where it can just sit. Uh, there's a little more space in there now, so the foot pedal can be out of the way. And there's still something to push on or something to anchor with if you're going backwards or push on the back. So it gives the operator preference of how they want to run the foot pedal. I'll say that I generally prefer it this way. Uh, that way it gives my foot somewhere to be when I'm not on it. I can, I can put it straight down and don't have to be on the pedal itself. But some people will prefer to have this plate on as well. So that was the name of the game on some of these changes. Just try and make it a little easier to live with, a little more functional, a little more ergonomic for the operators. And then the last thing to mention is actually one of the accessories that we uh, launched previously, and that's the downdraft fan on the canopy. Uh, that is obviously compatible with this machine. We couldn't say it then, but we do want to remind people now that that is available for this machine as well. Uh, and it will be something that uh, a lot of people will really enjoy. So uh, we'll mount on, on this ROPS just like the 4500, and we'll plug into this wiring harness with the provided kits. That leads me to the last and question number five in our trivia series, and that is, what is the total lumen output of all four lights on the 4520? So I just said it maybe five minutes ago. Hopefully you guys can get it. First person to get that will win the last of our gear packages. Okay. So now we can go into pricing and availability. Uh, we're going to throw up another graphic on screen here. So Kristen, if you can do that. And this will show you all the pricing for the standard models, the standard 49 state models. Keep in mind, they are a little bit different for Europe and California models because those are a little bit different machines mechanically. Um, what we want to say is uh, kind of the two most important prices. So the 4520 starts at uh, 24225 for the 4520K. And the MSRP for the most popular model, which is presumably going to be the same as on 4500, uh, the 4520Z is 28765 That leads me into my next portion on this is powertrain. So what we've done is we've, stu we've stuck with the same four engines as the 4500. And when you get a chance to drive this thing, uh, keep in mind that, yes, they are the same engines. Even though they will feel like they have a little bit more power, we've stuck to the same engines. Uh, we, we know the reliability of them. We know what to expect. They've been working well. Um, and the reason they'll feel like they have a little more power and, and be a little bit more powerful in those demanding jobs is because the drivetrain is more efficient. That's going to come through uh, not on the spec sheet because they're still the same horsepower and torque, but you'll feel that because the machine being more efficient has more power to work with given those demanding situations. Um, and that probably is a good place to segue into talking about just what it's like to drive this machine and, and, and be on this machine. Uh, between the hydraulics and the engine, uh, packages and everything being more efficient and, and just you know managing heat a little better. All of those things come together to make a machine that just drives smoother. It drives quieter. When you're done working after a long day, it's not quite as tiring to be on this machine um, as, as previous machines or other machines. Uh, and so that's a, a vast improvement. But the performance is really where it shines. You know, you get onto your favorite attachment that you've put a lot of hours on. For me, it's a power bucket. Uh, you, I know some of you guys have seen my crazy mulch videos. I still move a lot of mulch, a lot of dirt. Uh, I use this thing like a, a Tonka toy in the woods. I push rocks and boulders, and I build berms and jumps. So it's a power bucket. I'm really familiar with that. I've got hundreds of hours on it. And when I use it on a 4520 versus a 4500, that's where it's like, oh, man, this thing is awesome. It's, it's so cool. It's so different. So uh, closing with that, I would encourage you that if you're familiar with a Ventrac, or even if you're not, Make sure you try and get on one, because it's an awesome experience to try. Uh, and if you're interested in one, it's going to be really revealing to drive the new one and see how it feels. Um, I will say that uh, availability is going to be sometime in November. And so we don't know exactly yet, but that's what we're looking at on time frame. But your very first chance to do exactly that and get on one of these machines is going to be next week in Louisville, Kentucky at the GIE Expo. So I know all of our YouTube uh, partners will be down there as well. Um, I know some of them have been on the machine already, have some opinions, and that's going to be your first chance to get a real live look at this thing in person. Uh, for those of you that are interested in this machine, 
you can call your dealer, ask them about timelines, and from here on out, once we are en ending this live video, all of the web links will be live. You can check out all that information. Uh, if you have already ordered a 4500 and you're in that bubble zone of waiting on delivery and now there's a new machine, uh, okay, wait, call your dealer, let's uh, talk through it, make sure everything's okay. Um, you might want to switch to the new machine. You might want to stick with the 4500 for pricing reasons or something. Uh, so if you're in that bubble zone, you've already placed an order and you just haven't gotten your machine yet, make sure you call your dealer, reach out to them. They'll work with our TSMs to make sure that you're taken care of uh, and that everything uh, is exactly the way you want it when you take delivery. Okay, the next thing we want to do is accept engineering uh, corrections. Okay, so we have a spot in there for when I make blunders. <laughs> it happens all the time. They're telling me I didn't get anything wrong this time, which is fantastic. So we'll skip that. Uh, and we can go straight to the winners, I think, of the gear stuff. So let's do, let's do that now. And then we can talk a little bit about some of this merch. Oh, I love this. Okay, so question number one, name one accessory launched two weeks ago. I don't know what he named, but he got it right. That is from Potato7. Potato, I don't know who you are, but I, but I love your username, and I have seen you in comments before, so I appreciate you being here for the live event. Congratulations. You win the $100 gift card to GCI Turf Merchandise so Store. So send us an email with your contact information. We'll link up with you. We'll get you sorted out with that. And same goes for the rest of you guys. Let us know your name. Um, just basically get in contact us, with us, and we'll get everything sorted out on the back end. So question number two, um, what year was the 4000 series introduced? The answer was 1998, um, and the winner was Blue Cord Property Care. So Blue Cord wins $100 to the Tractor Time with Tim merchandise store. Congratulations, Blue Cord. We see you all the time, too. We appreciate you being here. Uh, the next question, first person to spell oscillation correctly. This is my favorite one. Uh, Congratulations to Cooper Grabow. I hope I pronounced that right. I know people mispronounce my name, so if I mispronounce it, I'm sorry. Um, but congratulations, you're awesome at spelling. You win $100 to the Stony Ridge Farmer Merchandise Store. Uh, question number four, what is the yellow switch under the, under the tractor seat used for? Uh, the winner was Greg Bilek, and he wins $100 uh, of gear from the Lawn Care Life in Missouri. And I think that's actually gonna be one of our launch packages as well. Um, and so the answer to that, what I want to say a couple things there, is that that is just basically a battery cutoff switch. So that's useful for a couple things. If you park your tractor with either the key in it or out of it and it's in a precarious place and you want to make sure it can't start, flip that switch off, the machine will die. Uh, so it, it just cuts off all power to the battery. Also, if you're going to leave your tractor sit for a while and you don't want your battery to drain, flip that switch off, that'll help keep your battery fresher. So now everybody knows. And the last question, what is the total lumen output of all four lights of the 4520? Some pretty simple math, four times 1,000 is 4,000. Dominic Duke, congratulations, you win a 4520 launch pack from Ventrac. So good job, guys, way to get that stuff. Uh, I have another note here. If I've announced your name as a winner, please email marketing at ventrac.com with your name, address, and phone number. Somebody will get a hold of you. Okay, so what does that mean for Ventrac launch pack? Let's go into that real quick. We have some new merch, and that's behind me right here. You can see it. It looks cool, right? Uh, the Ventrac launch pack is this section right here. So that is a shirt, hat, and mug. So this is a custom mug you can see. I believe we have two separate options here. So we've got white and a black, and we've got the shield here. These are actually super cool. Um, I'm getting one of these very soon, and I'm really excited to use it. The price of this thing is somewhere in that $80, $90 range, and we are discounting it 45% to a price of $45.20. So <laughs> get, your, get your discounted launch pack today. That will be live in our store until 10 a.m. tomorrow. No special code needed. Uh, just thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of it. We want to get you guys some, some cool merch at less than what it should cost <laughs> by a long shot. So $45.20, get it today. Uh, the rest of this stuff will also be in the gear store. Check it out later when you get a chance. Okay, so I think we are about done. I've got a couple more notes to close things out. Uh, like I mentioned before, for more information on this tractor and the rest of our attachments, anything else that you have uh, questions on, be sure to visit our product page. If you go to the website, those links should be live right now, if not very, very soon. Um, but all of those links, I think, are also being posted in the chat section by Andrew. So you should have easy access to those. 
Again, very special thanks to all of our YouTube personalities. Uh, we really appreciate the work they do. If you've not checked out their channels, please check them out. Lawn Care Life, Tractor Time with Tim, Stony Ridge Farm, and Pete with GCI Turf. Um, we've also got a cool video featuring the 4520 coming up with one of those YouTube personalities himself. So look for that. And I think he might have one coming live here maybe this evening or tomorrow as well too. So check that out on YouTube. Um, Again, GIE is going to be the first place to see this thing in person. I encourage you to either come by the booth if you're planning on coming down already or change your plans, cancel the beach trip or whatever you're doing and come to GIE instead if you weren't planning on it. I'll be there. We'll all be there. The machines will be there. It'll be a great time. We've got the YouTube giveaway winners. Um, and we've talked about gear, so I think that wraps it up. Okay. Like I said earlier, if there are any questions, uh, make sure you drop those in the comment section or email us directly at Ventrac Marketing, and we will do our best to do a Q&A later at some point. Uh, look for future stuff on this. Uh, we've got a lot of new media coming out, a lot of video features that we've done over the past couple months, and we're really excited to keep, keep talking about this machine and show it in action, show what it can do. So again, thanks for being here. We really super appreciate it. A big thanks to the entire Ventrac marketing team, the engineers, all of our production, and everybody who's made this happen. Uh, it's been a long project, lots of stuff going into it, and we are so happy to finally get it to you. Um, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.